Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial and today we are painting the magnificent Black Talons. <laughs> Look at them, aren't they just absolutely fantastic to behold? We've got all five of them here and these were sent to me only by Games Workshop and it is a real treat to be able to paint these because I think they look absolutely stunning, really lovely. Stormcast, man. <laughs> Gotta love them. But what we do have is we have a guest appearance from Ideneth as well. And, well, thank you Games Workshop for sending these because now I'm going to paint them up for everybody at home. So, just a quick bit of admin before we get on with it. Uh, we've got our four Stormcast over here towards the left-hand side of the screen. And they've all been primed in Wraithbone. However, our Ideneth lady here, whose name has just immediately gone out of my head has been primed in white scar, low rye. Is it a lady? I think so. Anyway, uh, we've been playing, this one has been primed in white scar, the rest of them have been primed in wraithbone. And what we're going to do is we're gonna paint these four first. We're gonna get them fully finished. And then we're gonna do low rye, or low rye, however we're supposed to say it. Uh, so we're gonna get these done, then her. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these up to war hipster battle ready. Um, but we're going to do all of the kind of generic details first and then we'll do all of the specific ones. This is going to be probably quite a long one. Um, but before we do that, we need to grab some paints and grab some brushes. So we're going to do that and then we're going to get started. So the place we're going to start is with all of the gold armor, naturally. And the color we're going to be using first for this is some thinned down retributor armor. And we're going to apply this over the top of, as mentioned, all of the Stormcast gold armor. Uh, and there is going to be some additional gold details, but we'll cover those a little bit later. For example, any areas of trim on things like weapons and stuff like that. So we'll cover that when we get to the kind of more specific details for each of our Stormcast. But for now, we're just going to get this Retributor armor all over like this. There is one bit of armor that we're not going to do this over. There's going to be any of their bits that are going to actually end up being blue. I would recommend having the box art open for this, or indeed the product photography on the Games Workshop website, or on Warhammer Community. It's a really good article there with lots of pictures of all five of our members of the black talents. But for now, we just want to get this all over, just like this. So with all of that Retributor armor applied to all four of our Stormcast, what we're now going to do is we're going to shade it using a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Contrast Medium and Fire Slayer Flesh. And we're just going to start applying this all over. That's a little bit heavy. Ooh. But we're just going to move that around. We don't want that. So what we want to do is watch out for any dark pools. Whilst at the same time getting this lovely deep shading. So with that done, what we're now going to do is move on to the next colour, which is going to be some Celestium Blue. And we're going to apply this over a couple of different details. So firstly, we're going to apply this over the top of any peturges that we have. And this is be on Neve and I want to say Oxenhammer is his name. So we're going to apply this over the top of these, like so. What we're also going to do is we're going to apply this over the top of our archer's cloak. Just want to make sure we do the back here so as not to forget. Just 
just like that. Similarly, here we are. We have the cloak. So what we're going to do here is going to go for these nice big broad brush strokes. I'm going to start on. We'll start on this end, and that's a little bit too much paint. So what we're going to do is just start up here and very carefully apply this. over the top. Now it might look like it's the wrong colour. That's because in many ways it is, but it won't be for long. Whilst we're waiting for that Celestian Blue to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion. I'm going to apply this over the top of all of the leather and soft joints across all of our models. Just like this sort of thing. But what we're also going to do here, I'm just gonna apply this over the top of Neve's hair Once we've got this boot done, there we go. Nope, nope. Tiny little bit just in there, like that. So we're going to apply this over the top of Neve's hair. which does go all the way around here. We'll come back to doing that in just a minute because we can do that with Black Legion. But what we're also going to do is we're going to apply this over the casing of the bow. So with that all done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Black Templar and we're going to apply this over the top of the Celestian Blue. Just like that, and then similarly over the top of the cloak. So with that done, you should now have some absolutely gorgeous dark blue. So what we're going to do now is move on to the next colour. And that is going to be some Cygore Brown. And I'm going to apply this over the top of any kind of remaining straps. So for example, on Neve, we've got a little strap going across here. Whereas on some of the other ones, we've got things like gloves and scabbards. And things like that we also need to paint in so we'll be using the cycle brown over the top of those like that and then similarly over here we've got the quiver on the back
like so. We've got the scabbard right in here. gloves as well. Now another thing we're going to do on this individual with the side wall brown, the name has escaped me again, is we're actually going to apply this over the top of her face. Once we've got this glove done. Don't want very much here. Just like that. All that saigor brown applied, we're then going to take some flesh terrors red. And we're going to apply this over the top of the grips of all of the weapons. Are there any swords, gladii, axes, you name it. If it's got a wrap, we're applying flesh terrors red over it. With that Saigor brown all applied, we're then going to take some Gilliman flesh and we're going to apply this over the top of our remaining flesh. Like that sort of thing. Similarly, on, I'm pretty certain his name is Rostus Oxenhammer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but here, we've got the hands and the arms as well to do. Although, in this case, I've given him a helmet, so it's just the arms and the helmets to do. Arms and the helmets, arms and the hands to do. So with that Gellerman flesh applied, we're now going to take some Talisar blue. We're going to apply this over the top of the bits that are going to be the kind of armoured blue. So for example, here on Neve, we're going to apply this just here around the diamond. Like that. But similarly, we also have areas such as these visible shoulder pads. And with that Talisar blue applied, we're then going to take some Ultramarines blue. I'm going to apply this over the top.
With that done, we're now going to work on a couple of individual details. And first up is Neve. And the color we're going to be using first for her is Wildwood. And we're applying this all over the top of the cloak. Or at least the furry parts. It's nice and simple, this one. So with that wildwood all applied, what we're then going to do is take some soul blight grey and we're going to apply this over the top of the inside of the cloak. This is where we're also going to move on to another one of our miniatures, which is going to be the older gentleman. I keep remember, I keep, I keep looking at their names and then immediately forgetting them. We're balancing a lot here. So we can get this all over. Like so. And similarly, over here, we're going to use Soul Black Grey. And in this time, what we're going to do is we're going to use this over the top of the hair and the beard. I'm going to use this over the top of the outside of his cloak rather than the inside. Just like that. And we're also going to use this over the top of any of these white icons that we have. And don't worry if you've got some blue on them because we are going to be re layering them anyway. A little bit later. Just like this. And what we will also do, thinking about it, this is more of a generic coat actually, but it is over specific details. But what we will also do, just to quickly demonstrate this, is we will apply this over the inside of this individual's cloak. Just like that sort of thing. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take two colours, Agrax Earthshade and Wildwood. I'm going to use this to add some kind of striping and patterny stuff into the cloak. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by drawing out basically areas of our pattern using the Agrax Earthshade. So we're going to start just kind of around here and what we're going to do is we're going to add a sort of vague little strip like that then we're going to leave a gap and then we're going to add another one like this then we're going to leave another gap and add another one going across like so 
But the reason we have the Wildwood open is because what we're going to do is wash the brush. I'm going to add a little bit of Wildwood into the areas that we've just added those Agrax Air Shade for. Just like that sort of thing. We're going to go back to Agrax Air Shade. Like this. Be a little bit easier if I turned it that way, wouldn't it? Wash the brush. Just wick away that. Grab some of that wildwood. apply this inside the Agrax Air Shade. Like that sort of thing. We're going to do once we've got it open is we're going to take the Agrax Air Shade and apply this over the inside of his cloak. So with that done, Hendrick's cloak is looking like this. So what we need to do now is we need to take some Seraphim Sepia. And we're gonna apply this in kind of like a stippling motion over the top of the cloak. Not necessarily all over it. to add a little bit of extra colour here and there. So with that done, we can now put Hendrick to one side alongside Neve because we've got all of their unique details done. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick up Rostus. Uh, and the colour we're going to be using next for him is Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to be applying this over the top of his horn. Just in here. Just like that. 
And with that Agrax Airshade applied, we're then going to take two colours, Skeleton Horde and Wildwood, and we're going to apply this over the top of these hordes up the top. So we're going to start with Skeleton Horde. I'm going to apply this over the top, like this. Like that. Then we're going to wash the brush, then grab some wild wood. I'm going to apply this over the tip of the horn whilst it's still wet. Across both sides like that. Wash the brush and then grab a little bit more skeleton hoard. I'm going to use this to just blend the two colors together and smooth out any transitions. Like that. And additionally, I'm going to use the skeleton horde to paint in the parchment. Just on its own, but we've got it open, so we might as well do this now. So with that all done, because it is unique to him, we are going to use a metallic, and that is going to be Castellax Bronze. I'm going to apply this over the top of the shoulder, the knee, and these kind of bits of the Warhammer. So here and here. So with that done, we can put Rostus to one side. And now we have the eagle on Shakana's shoulder. So the color we're gonna be using first here is Tyran Blue. And we're gonna apply this over the top of all of the bird, excluding the beak and the feet. With that Tyran blue applied, we're then going to take some Storm Fiend. I'm going to apply this over the top of the lowest rung of feathers. Like that, and we're also going to apply this around the neck. Like so, 
Yeah, I'm just going to bring it down the chest just a little bit. With that Storm Fiend applied, we're then going to take some Space Wolves Grey. I'm going to apply this over the next rung up. So with that now done, we're then going to take some rattling grime. I'm going to apply this over the top of the beak. Like so. And with that done, we're then going to take some gore grunt of fur. And we're going to apply this over the top of the feet. Finally, for Shikana, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Skeleton Horde. I'm going to apply this over the top of the bowstring. So with that all done, we've got all of our kind of unique details fully base coated and things like that. So the unit is looking pretty cool. However, there's just one or two last things to do. Well, two last things to do, which is to get the rest of the kind of generic details, which are in fact metallics, done. So that's what we're going to work on now. And the first of these is going to be some thinned down lead belcher. And we're gonna use this to pick out basically things like the scale mail and the weapons and blades and things like that. Now I recommend having the box art open in front of you or indeed the product photography. So you can pick out all of these silver details. But as mentioned it is going to be things like the scale mail just there, the sword blades, the axe blades, the hammer head, mechanical areas on the crossbows, stuff like that. And so with that done, we're then going to take some thinned down Retributor armor once again. And we're going to use this to paint in all of the remaining details. So with that all done, all of our base coats are now on, on the Stormcast part of the Black Talons. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some shades. And the first of these is going to be some Gilliman Flesh. And we're going to use this to shade all of those gold details. Not the armour, but all the ones we just did. We're 
also going to do. I'm going to apply this over the red as well. And with that done, we're then going to take some null oil. I'm going to apply this over the top of the silver. And with that now done, we're then going to take some Agrax Earthshade and we're going to apply this over the top of the Castellax Bronze and we're going to apply this over the top of Neve's Cloak. So we're going to use this to highlight these little areas. Highlight? Shade. <laughs> Goodness me. like that sort of thing and then similarly over the top of Neve's fur cloak so with that done our stormcast are now all at what I would call a war hipster battle ready and they're already looking pretty fantastic however we're not going to leave them there. We're going to take them to the next level. I'm going to be, I do this by adding some layers and some highlights. And the first of these is going to be some thinned down retributor armor. And we're going to be using this to relayer all of the armor. So any kind of flat open panels. So for example, just here across the chest. So we're just going to apply this like this. Just avoiding anywhere where the fire slayer flesh and contrast medium is really settled. Now, when it comes to areas like this lion's head on the panel on the shoulder, we don't need to do that because it's quite a small fiddly detail. I'm going to be adding some highlights after this. So for now, what we're looking for are chest plates, leg plates, armor plates. Just like this sort of thing. So with that retributor armor all reapplied, what we're then gonna do is highlight every single gold detail on there, including the ones we did in the second round of retributor armoring. And the color we're gonna be using is a roughly two part storm host silver to one part retributor armor mix. And we're just going to start picking out all the edges with this. Just like this sort of thing. So with that done, all of the gold is now finished and it looks absolutely fantastic. So what we're going to do now is move on. And the color we're going to move on to is some thinned down Corax white. I'm going to use this to highlight any small white details, but we're also going to use this to effectively relayer the inside of our two white capes. So I'm just going to start right up here.
And we're just going to avoid any recesses where the soul blight gray has settled. So on Neve's cape, she's got it's quite flat actually, there's not too much. in the way of depth to this one. And we are gonna use this to highlight areas such as the icons on the blue shoulders. white hair and beard. And I can also use this down a little. Dot of white right in the middle. There's a diamond here, for example. So with all of that white now highlighted and relayed, what we're going to do is move on to the next color. And that's going to be the dark blue. And the colour we're going to use to highlight this first is some thinned down McCrag blue. So with that McCrag blue all applied, we're then going to take some thinned down Alatoc blue and we're going to apply this to the sharpest points in our dark blue. So with that now done, what we're then going to do is take some Hoeth blue and we're going to use this to highlight our lighter blue. So this is going to be those shoulders. And things like that. And so with that now done, we're going to take some Fenrisian grey and we're going to gently dry brush this over the bird's feathers. And with that Fenrisian Grey applied, we're then going to do a really gentle dry brush of Blue Horror over the top. So with that all done, it's now time to move on once again to the next color, and that is going to be the black details. And the color we're gonna be using to highlight this is some thinned down Dawnstone. I'm gonna start up here with the hair. We do have the large crossbow. And details like that that we also need to highlight. So with all that Dawnstone applied, we then want to take a tiny amount of Administratum Grey. We want to use this to add some little spot highlights to all the black. So 
So with that all done, we can now move on to the silver and the color we're gonna be using to highlight all of that is some thins down iron breaker. With all of those silver highlights now applied, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down Rune Lord brass. I'm going to use this to highlight the Castellax bronze areas. So with that all done, we're now going to take some Blood Angels Red and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the gems. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Thins Down Flayed One Flesh. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our pale skin. And then next up, we're going to take some Gorthor Brown and use this to highlight Shikana's face. So with the flesh now highlighted, what we're going to do is we're going to take a tiny amount of Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the top of Neve's teeth and all of their eyes. And with that done, we then want to use a tiny little dot of Screaming Skull in either corner of the eyes and to highlight the teeth. So with that, all four of our Stormcast are now finished, aside from their bases. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop them to one side, of course, and it's now time to work on Larai, our Soul Scryer. So color we're gonna be using first here is Croxigore Scales. And we're going to be applying this over the top of all of her kind of flowy clothes. So we've got this little bit just here. And as a quick reminder, she has been primed in white scar. So we're going to apply this over this bit, which then curls around the leg just there. Like that. And we're also going to apply this over the top of these bits here on the arms. So with that done, we're then going to take some Celestium Blue and we're going to apply this to the outside of both the skirt and the cloaks. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Achillean Green and we're going to apply this over both of these colours.
And with that done, we're then going to take a tiny amount of Storm Fiend. And we're going to apply this over the top of the Croxagore Scalesy areas. like that. So with that all done, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some Black Templar and we're going to apply this over the top of the trousers. And then next up, we're going to take some Cygore Brown and we're going to apply this over the top of the boots. And with that done, we then want to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the top of the staff. So with that all done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Pilar Glacier and we're going to apply this to the inside of the cloaks. And with that now done, we're then going to take some Corellia Green Shade and we're going to apply this over the top of all this trim design stuff on the cloak. And with that Corellia green shade applied, we're then going to take some Blood Angels Red. I'm going to apply this over the top of these tassels here on the back. And with that done, we're then going to take some Reichland Flesh Shade. We're going to apply this over the top of her skin. Like so. So with that done, I've applied the Reichland Flesh Shade over the top of the top fold of that veil and that will become apparent as to why in a little bit. But what we're going to do next is we're going to take some Seraphim Sepia and we're going to apply this over the top of all of these shells. Hanging here. 
So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thins down rune fang steel. I'm going to apply this as two thin coats over the top of all the armor. And so with that done, we're now going to take some thinned down Retributor armor and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the remaining details. So with that all done, it's now time to add some shades. Now the first of these is going to be two shades, Corellia Green Shade and Tyran Blue. We've got them both out at the same time because we're going to be doing a number of different things with them. So what we're going to firstly do with both of these colours is shade all the silver armour. We're going to start with some Corellia Green Shade and we're going to apply this over a section of armour. I'm just going to start here on the chest. So I'm going to apply this all over just like that. Then. We're going to wash the brush, grab some Tyran Blue, and then we're going to apply this as well over the top at the same time to create some really cool color combinations and different shading all the way around the armor. So because we've done that one, we can then just move on to that little bit of hip stuff and we can do it just there as well like that but additionally what we're also going to do is we're going to apply the coelia green shade on its own over the top of the trousers like that and like that And additionally, we're going to apply Tyran Blue over the top of the veil. And because it's not a particularly strong colour, some of that Reichland Flesh Shade that we left on the top fold will just about peek through to give it that sense of being a little bit see-through just like that and so with all of that blue applied we're then going to take some Fuegan orange and we're going to use this to shade all the gold So with that all done, Lorai is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready, and she's looking pretty cool. However, we're not going to leave it there, no. We're going to take it to the next level, and we're going to do this adding some layers and some highlights. And the first of these is going to be a layer, and it's going to be some thins down techless blue. And we're effectively going to do a full re-layer of this over the top of the clothes. like this. We've got it as dark as we have so we get some really gorgeous deep shading in there. But now we need to brighten it right back up so it's a nice sea blue. And 
with that Teclis blue applied, we're then going to take a tiny amount of Baharos blue. I'm going to use this to highlight the clothes. So with that all done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down rune fang steel. I'm going to use this to effectively relayer and highlight all of the silver armor. So with that all done, the silver is now all finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Hoeth blue and we're going to use this to highlight our darker blue. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Gorthor Brown and use this to highlight the boots. That Gorthor Brown applied, we're then going to take some Liberator Gold. I'm going to use this to highlight the gold. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down white scar. I'm going to use this to highlight the inside of our cloaks. Just like that sort of thing. And we're also going to use this to highlight our trim on the back of the cloak. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thin down pallid witch flesh. I'm going to use this to highlight all the skin. With that Pallid Witch Flesh all applied, we're then going to take a tiny amount of Black Legion. I'm going to apply this over the top of the eyeballs. And with that Black Legion applied to the eyes, what we're then going to do is take a teensy tiny little dot of Screaming Skull, and we're going to apply this in the corners. Of the eyeballs. And finally, with those eyes now painted in, we're going to take some Blood Angels Red, and we're going to apply this over the top of the gem. So with that done, the black talons are now all finished. So it's time to do their bases. And we're gonna do this really quickly here. 
because um, they're not actually all that difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking some Griff Charge Grey and we're going to apply this over the top of any of the kind of man-made stonework. We're not looking for fallen rocks or just, you know, terrain rocks, natural rocks. That's the word I'm looking for. But anything that looks like it's a brick or a statue. And things like that. And with that done, we're then going to take some Targor Raid Shade and we're going to apply this over the top of the other rocks. With that done, we're going to take some Dark Angels Green and we're going to apply this into the kind of soft, smooth section. On low rise base. Because as far as I can make out, this is kind of a watery texture. So we're going to place them as the addition started Stormcast fighting in a swamp whilst we wait for the Dark Angels green to dry we're going to take some wild wood now and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the soil With that all done, we're then gonna take some Creed Camo. I'm gonna apply this over the top of any grasses and any vines. So with that done, we're then gonna take some Rattling Grime. I'm gonna apply this over the top of any trees. And with that done, we're then going to take some Skeleton Horde and we're going to apply this over any toadstools and any skulls. We've already got the one skull on here. It's very unlike Warhammer. So with that all done, we're then going to take three colours. Seraphim Sepia, Gorgrunt of Fur and Black Templar. And we're going to apply this all over these fish. So we're going to start with Seraphim Sepia. We want to get this over the top of the fish. like that. And we're going to wash the brush. Then we're going to take Gorgrunt to fur. And whilst they're still wet, we're going to apply this over the top of the fish's bodies. Like so. I'm going to wash the brush one more time. I'm going to grab Black Templar. 
I'm going to apply this over the top of the heads. Just like that. And we're just going to go back to Gore Grunt of Fur. We're just going to add a little bit of it there, where the heads and the bodies intersect. So with that all done, what we're then going to do is take some Nurgle's Rot, and we're going to apply this over the top of the Dark Angel's Green. Now the heavier you do it, the more green it will appear. And the lighter you do it, the more it kind of starts to take on this kind of filthy, kind of filmy texture. So experiment with how much you want to do. So with that all done, we are now going to finish things off with a very, very gentle dry brush of Tyrant Skull. I'm going to be doing that over the top of all the details. And there we have it. The Black Talons are now finished and they are absolutely, I think, my favourite thing I've painted this year. I adore these guys. I think they look fantastic. Stormcast are my favourite faction in all of Warhammer and just to have such characterful, wonderful models is an absolute dream. Thank you so much Games Workshop for sending me these early because, well, this is a real highlight and a treat for me. Love it. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you'd like to support me further, you absolutely can do so by heading to patreon.com forward slash warhipster, just like all of these wonderful, amazing people have done. And alternatively, you could become a YouTube channel member by clicking on the join button below, exactly like these fabulous folks have done scrolling up on the screen before you. There are so many of you out there that it really takes my breath away and I cannot thank you enough for everything you do as without you I wouldn't be able to keep making these Contrast Plus videos. And if you really like this video and you want to send me a little thanks just click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to make sure you stay up to date don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.